Assalamualaikum to Dr. Mahiran Binti Maktar. We are from Group 4 and today we are going to present on the topic of an analysis of the intersection of constitutional rights and child level practices in Malaysia. In the introduction part, in exploring the intersection of constitutional rights and child labour practices in Malaysia, Malaysia has ratified both ILO conventions on child labour. The Constitution of Malaysia safeguards fundamental liberties, including the right to freedom and the prohibition of forced labour. Additionally, there are specific laws such as the Children and Young Persons Employment Act 1966, which apply to Peninsular Malaysia and provide the legislative framework for child employment. In examining the intersection of constitutional rights and child labour practices in Malaysia, it is critical to analyse the extent to which the nation's legal commitments align with on-the-ground realities. Child labour can take many different forms such as street labour, farm labour and household labour. In Malaysia, child labour is not limited to a small number of children labouring in fields and moving heavy lots of farm crops. Children can also be found sitting on the ground with a metal bucket and pleading with passerby for spare changes or selling tissue to customers for a few ringgits. Based on the result of the survey, the majority of the respondents, which is 87.5%, have agreed that yes, they have encountered children on the streets begging for money. These children are usually in poor condition with their clothing all worn out and dirty. Poverty has an obvious relationship with child labour. Although it is not always the case, poverty is a major contributing factor to child labour. The majority of parents influence their child's working factor by manipulating their conflicting emotion, which means most of these children are involved in the labour working are being forced. The 75% of respondents agreed, while the rest are having conflict between yes or no. The influence of Malaysian culture and belief, which state that children should obey their parents and that they should always do what is best for them, may, de may be the cause of this. The majority of cases involve low-income families and children who are doing poorly in school. Most people agree that education is a fundamental human right and the only path to a brighter future. It is essential, even though there is no assurance that it will result in greater life opportunities. Early labour participation is thought to have some sort of negative impact on the children's formal schooling due to this disruption it causes. Children who work long hours at job that conflict with school activities and causes them to lose concentration on their studies often find it difficult to participate in the educational system. The Education Act 1996 stated that it is mandatory for children to complete their primary school education. To begin with, Article 5 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution is crucial for safeguarding children from exploitative labour practices. It ensures that no person, including children, is deprived of life or personal liberty. This provision protects children from being forced into harmful work environments and denied educational opportunities. Malaysian judiciary also referred to the Indian jurisprudence where the right to life under Article 21 includes protection from forced labour and exploitation. Next, Article 6, Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution prohibits all forms of forced labour, including child labour. This prohibition is essential in preventing the exploitation and coercion of children into labour. Malaysia's penal code strengthened this with a Section 374, criminalising the act of compelling someone to work against their will, ensuring those who abuse children through forced labour face illegal consequences. The National Action Plan for Forced Labour complements these measures by raising awareness and enhancing law enforcement to prevent child labour. Furthermore, Article 12 of the Federal Constitution emphasizes the right of children to education, which is crucial in combating child labour. Article 12 Clause 1A ensures all children have equal access to education, while Article 12 Clause 1B guarantees non-discrimination in financial aid allocation. This interpretation is crucial because it recognizes that even working children should not be deprived of educational opportunities. Education empowers children to resist exploitation. Thus, ensuring all children can access education without academic barriers is a key to reduce child labour. Lastly, the Children and Young Persons Employment Act 1966 provides a legal framework to protect young workers in Malaysia. It defines a child as under 14 years and a young person as between 14 and 18 years, allowing only light, non hazardous work for these groups. The 2019 amendments to the Act prohibit hazardous employment and ensure proper working conditions aiming to prevent economic exploitation and ensure that work does not interfere with the children's education and development. 
also have the case of Beatrice against the Sinarbang in Malaysia, in which the High Court emphasized the need for equality before the law and equal protection for all under Article 8, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. This particularly underscores the protection of minors against exploitations um, contradicting to the Federal Constitution and employment laws. And also, we do have the Law and Child Labor in Malaysia case study in a Chinese in village 2007, in which it's we, we had a finding in which child labor is not solely due to poverty, education problems, and um, cultural and social factors. They all play a role. So the suggestion given from this case study was to modif modify child labor laws to consider those relevant factors. Moving on to another case study was the reform in the law on child labor issues in Malaysia 2014 and what was suggested in this study was to modify the Children and Young Persons Employment Act 1966 to include stricter penalties for employers who do um, violate the employment laws and to provide more support for child workers and to increase the public awareness regarding child labor impact. So for the summary, to conclude this section, we do know that child labor in Malaysia is a complex issue, which it shouldn't be, but it unfortunately is a complex issue and needs to be strengthened. We need to have a strengthened legal framework to protect children from further exploitation and abuse from their employers. And we need to also raise public awareness and create and um, create and work on having more social programs which can help contribute to the raising awareness regarding So we can see the influence of, of the United Nations um, Convention on Rights of the Child, um, in which it is a persuasive power in shaping the Malaysian law with regards to the rights and uh, protection of children, and it also influences the enactment of the Child Act 2001, and it also further emphasizes protection from exploitation and abuse to child uh, child workers. So to summarize. The United Nations um, Convention on the Rights of Children impact in Malaysian laws, like impacted the creation of Malaysian laws with regard to children, and it also further shows the importance of aligning national laws with the UNCRC, like the International Convention, to help combat the issue that happens not only in Malaysia but worldwide. But since Malaysia cannot just accept a persuasive law like that, they ratified it, which is a good step in one direction. Next, in recent developments, court decision or legislat legislatively, the Fighting Against Forced Labour and Child Labour in Supply Chains Act is set to come into force on January 1, 2024. This act represents a significant step for Malaysia as it obligates businesses to submit an annual report detailing the measures they have taken to prevent forced and child labour in their supply chains. In addition, amendments to Malaysia's Employment Act, which was supposed to come into force on September 1, 2022, have been deferred to January 1, 2024. These amendments include a reduction in the maximum working hours per week from 48 to 45, excluding meal breaks, in line with the International Labour Organization Convention. On the judicial front, although specific court decisions from 2024 regarding child labour in Malaysia are not readily available, there is a compendium of court decisions that abrogates the worst forms of child labour convention, demonstrating Malaysia's commitment to international labour standards. Moreover, the Office of Child Labour, Forced Labour and Human Trafficking has published procedural guidelines to combat these issues, indicating the government continued efforts to address and eradicate child labour. These developments reflect on ongoing commitment to improve labour practices to protect the rights of children in Malaysia. With the new regulations and guidelines in place, there is a clear path towards mitigating the issues of child and forced labour in, in the country. Next, I will present about the implication and also consequences. For implication, we have analysed both the direct and indirect effect of it. The first point for implication is to enhance the legal protection. Generally, knows the federal constitution under Article 5, 6 and 12, also minor and young person of Employment Act 1996, show there is solid legal foundation for safeguarding minor for exploitative work practice. The next point for implication is on the judicial interpretation. As we can see that when the federal court has ruled about the matter of the child labour, the other lower court must follow it as well. So, uh, so clearly you can see such a precedent can improve the enforcement of the children's rights by establishing a clear legal norms. So, let's move to the consequences where we choose to improve that the child enforcement can result in more comprehensive child protection system, such as improved reporting procedure, support service, and also labor practice monitoring. 
This means the underscore the importance of effective enforcement of child labor laws and how it can be resolved in comprehensive system designed to protect the children. Next, when the responsible party have increased the accountability, such as emphasize the legal penalty, also stricter enforcement for offenders are among ways to discourage child labor, fostering a culture of compliance and respect for children's rights. In the conclusion, there is many ways that Malaysian government can do as to strengthen its efforts to avoid child labor and preserve the right of dignity of all children by ongoing judicial scrutiny, law retirement, and also by community engagement. Hence, this all from us. Thank you, Doctor, for watching patiently. Thank you.